this. Okay. I don't want to do that. I just want that to stop doing that. So there we go. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. So this is sort of a supplemental recording, and I'll just say that I'm Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and today is Saturday, February the 10th, 2018. And we're just kind of waiting because I had forgotten that BZ would be joining us at 8. And in full transparency, my text to you said, sure, come, come now and talk me off the ledge. <laughs> I have been watching something taking place in Conscious Conversation Central Facebook group today, and it kind of started a couple of days ago uh, after the alleged trial and the uh, <clears throat> ridiculously silly verdict. And it would appear that all of a sudden there's lots of, well, it, okay, it's all of a sudden to me, I'm certain by what is being said that there have been these methods of removing oneself from the system, going from the public to the private for a long time, or at least that's what is being touted. Now, in fairness, I haven't looked into all this kind of stuff, okay? I really haven't, because from what I understand, the system, and even if, even if, you know, I've heard lots of arguments that uh, the UCC filings are bogus and all of this, which, you know, I, I don't know. I don't comprehend any of that. But I know from my own gut feeling that even if all of that is true, the system is dying. It is crumbling. And, and if indeed everything that Heather has done was to foreclose the system, all corporations in the world and the the system itself has been foreclosed upon and this entire thing as you and i have discussed before was to bring it all transparent well why do i need to worry or expend money and energy and time in trying to remove myself from something that's dying anyway. So that's me, okay? And I'm not trying to tell others what to do or whatever. Oh, this is from BZ. Um, and I would never do that. Every being has to make choices for themselves, period. That's, that's the way it is. My issue is that... Um, it seems like all of a sudden now, Conscious Conversation Central seems to be the platform to gather folks into these other ways. And that's fine if that, like, again, every being has to make decisions for themselves. But what I'm seeing is what smacks of some shaming, some, well, you're a creator being and the creator gave us divine rights and I don't want to leave my, my rights on the table, so to speak. And I'm just kind of laughing and I wasn't really sure what if or if I should say anything or if it was my place to say anything. I mean, Conscious Conversation Central is something that I did create, and I want everyone to be able to have a voice, of course. But I don't like the idea of it becoming a place to scoop folks into something. Or because, you know, everybody, I, I got this feeling there, there was a big letdown after the trial because everyone, including myself, felt like they were going to be, you know, vindicated and everything. Now I could see, you know, like, like you and I kind of talked on the Tuesday before the verdict that didn't get recorded. And I do understand that now. I really do. Oh, okay. I, I think um, whether it was source or something else that kept that recording from going out because 
our recording that went out the day while we were waiting for the verdict, we talked about the exact same thing. And that got recorded and gone and went out. Yeah. So I feel certain that we were on to something on Tuesday night, but it wasn't time for it to go out. I feel certain that this has been the whole thing from start to finish. I feel that the system has been foreclosed upon and this court case was to bring public, visible, transparent, all the corruption, the fraud and everything into the, into the system itself from the inside out because now there's transcripts that are in that digital system that have recorded every word, every word that was spoken in that courtroom and including what was said by the, the, the Federal Reserve representative, the vice president of fraud investigation <clears throat> and financial intelligence. Yeah, I can't wait to read those transcripts. Oh, I'm telling you, if half of what that man said was actually true, this country has bigger issues than anybody could even imagine. Because I, part of my whole thing and the whole case was, let's think about this for a moment. If it's true, if it was actually true, <clears throat> that Randy used... A Federal Reserve routing number, a valid Federal Reserve routing number, and a an bogus account number, and was able to purchase $30 million in CDs. What? First of all, what? I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. That is is the biggest load of crap that I've ever heard. And I would challenge any person out there, go ahead, try to set up an account that's bogus and see what you get. It will say mm -hmm. invalid account. So that right there, the, and then, then his statement that they can't stop all fraud or it would hurt the economy. Uh, again, what? <laughs> What? I haven't heard that one. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he did say that. Well, Katie Katie actually made him a nice little meme because that man's picture was found on the internet. And she made a nice little meme with the, what he said right underneath of it. Uh, and, and when the transcripts comes out, po folks will hear it. It's not just, you know, some bunch of boobs that came and watched a, a court trial and and heard what they maybe wanted to hear so that that will come out folks will get to read that so wow well you know in the most literal sense of our economy it it all is fraud so to stop the fraud would be to stop our economy as we know it if we could stop all that fraud well, true, because this, well, the system is fraud to begin with. That's part of that. But I mean, operating on the assumptions that they themselves are operating on, that statement was pure stupidity, first of all. And then I just, like I said, I, the, I don't know. I kind of feel like. I know I can't and I would never try to stop people from doing silly things. No, that's not true. I think I probably would because that's just the kind of person I am. But I guess I don't, I don't like the idea of folks coming along and saying, well, you tried this over here and it didn't work for you. So come on over here, pay me and I'll show you how to get out of the system. I did, it just smacks of more usury, to be honest. And I don't care for it. And I didn't, I just, 
I really didn't know what to do. I really was about to go live and say, okay, that's enough. Let's all stop this now. Well, we got to take a look uh, at what, what the origins of Facebook are, that entire platform. And, and so it, it's, it's a part of the system that has been weaponized against us, against our, our consciousness, against our psyches, really. And, oh, that's true. And, it, and so much of the perception authorship process that, that we talk about uh, is affected by what people see on Facebook or basically where people choose to make their observations that's going to be the the avenue that is going to be you know most affected by the the system's message and if you get a whole bunch of people to agree that they're going to use one platform facebook which came out of the the government um yeah. you know it, it, you're gonna you're gonna see effects from that so i'm not surprised that that you're seeing a shift in the energy on your channel it's an interesting observation to me. Um, I, I don't, I don't think that we've seen the end of, of this hat J uh, experience no. and I, I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but I am, um, you know, quite a while ago, I, I realized that uh, this is, this is, it is much bigger. It's going to unfold much more slowly than than some of us would really want in the now moment, and uh, I just had to had to let go of what just this heightened vigilance every day. It it it, it was just uh, it got to be too much work for my consciousness to deal with to to be right on that edge all the time. So I I really started to to just kind of change the perception lenses a bit and have a more zoomed out focus and, you know, highlight, highlight, uh, energy on, on the big picture dynamics, uh, the, the, the main thread that's running through. Cause we get lost in the, all the fine little, he said, she said stuff, the, you know, yeah. I'm, I, I haven't figured all this stuff out either. I got into this because I was trying to figure it out. I had heard, you know, about the straw man idea uh, years ago. And, you know, it just keeps popping up on my radar. I mean, it's one of those things that won't go away. And there's always just a little bit more information, a little bit more, a little bit more every time. And, wow, I just started digging into it again right when Hat J got arrested. And... Uh, there was nothing. You could hardly find anything on what was going on. And I'm just pouring through all these old talks that Hat J uh, recorded and put up on YouTube. And and it's just my mind was blown. Here's, here's someone claiming to be a lawyer having worked in the system with the banks and, and just everything that she had researched and all the UCC paperwork that she'd filed, uh, it, it was just, uh, you can't argue with some direct concrete observations. I've gone into the UCC system. I've been able to verify that, that these documents are there. I, I, I really, it's hard for me to decipher w what these documents mean and and if, if these documents are meaningless, if the claims in them are meaningless, that kind of means that they can be easily rebutted or shown that they're frivolous. But none of that's happened yet. And that's, you know, sometimes the, the most powerful observations are what you don't see. What, what's exactly. in absence here? Exactly. And, and I, here's, here's the thing that bothers me, I think, the most. Um, <clears throat> okay, so in the trial, during the trial, one of the things that the U.S. attorney said when she, again, 
didn't want the UCCs entered into evidence were. Are we talking about Davidson or Svalto? Davidson. She, she's holding the whole stack of them now, and it's a stack this big. And she's flipping it around, telling the jury and everyone else that this is all gobbledygook. This is gobbledygook and a lot of meaningless jargon. The UCCs. Uh, what? The UCCs that were not allowed to be yeah. admitted? If they were gobbledygook and, and meaningless jargon, then why try to keep them out? And, well, okay, so that was the other thing that kind of floored me, that after the entire case in chief was done, right before and after the rebuttal witnesses had been called, Right before closing arguments, Heather asked one last time to have a smaller number of the UCCs admitted into evidence. And the U.S. attorney did not object. Now, that seems awfully odd to me since before the case actually started, they didn't want him in. While the case was going on, she called them gobbledygook. And right at the very last second, they decided, okay, what, whatevs. Put them in there. I know how much time I've spent looking at that UCC paperwork. Um, I've got Heather's general narrative, but what What's the light that's really lacking out in the world is to take that stack, go to the first filing, page one, and sit down with Heather and just have her break it down into words just like you and I are talking right now that are easily understandable. And yeah, I feel like she could back everything up and show how everything uh, is, is rooted in law all through all the different layers of law. I, I feel like she's got that, but uh, that is the light that <clears throat> was kept out of the courtroom. The jury, you know, that it's obvious that, that a profile was done on the different jury members. It, right. It's obvious that everybody who was part of that case, you know, prosecution and defense knows who those jury people were. Yeah. And I know just how hard it is for me to go through that UCC paperwork and, a, and, and be able to assign any meaning to it that, that I'm comfortable with, especially when it challenges all of the indoctrinated perceptions that I have about our system. When I come at it from the direction of looking at how many observations just with this Hat J experience fly in the face of everything that I've been told and everything that I believed when I was a cog within that system, um, I, I can see how there's, there's a major disconnect here and it makes me want to look in further and, and just look everything over again. But those jury members most likely don't, don't have, don't have the same perception filters to look through. They've already been told by, you know, the prosecution that this stuff is gobbledygook and, and they didn't even want to allow it. And we know, we know that they came back just with a guilty verdict on all counts within just within hours. There, there's yeah, no two way and that a half, you, to be exact, only two and a half hours. You so. couldn't even read one of those filings and come to a place of knowing and understanding about what it meant in two and a half hours, because every one references all these other filings, and and you've just you end up having these pointers going in different ways and having to reference different documents to put the narrative together. So, so really by admitting them at the very end, uh, I don't know. I don't know quite 
how to feel about that, but the, it's only going to come to light and be used as evidence if, if there's more, uh, more hearings and trials, and that would be through an appeal. That would be the next step. Well, there were some things, okay, so, you know, a lot of all I have right now are suppositions because I, I have nothing. I have no legal training. I have no anything. And I, I was there in the courtroom. And so there's a lot of stuff I heard that because the transcripts aren't out yet, um, others don't have that same pool of information to, to go with, right? But... <clears throat> There's, as a puzzle piece collector, there were pieces. There's lots of pieces that I witnessed that are forming a puzzle, a, 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 an image, if you will, for me, that all of a sudden, right there towards the end, when you and I had that conversation on Tuesday that didn't get recorded, started becoming clearer. And for me, it just is getting clearer and clearer and clearer. And what I mean by that is this. I have a feeling, and from everything I've seen, I think that all of what she says is true and correct. She did foreclose on the system and the government. All corporations on this planet, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence of that fact. When you look back over the last hmm, four or five years of companies that are merging and eating each other, CEOs stepping down, all of these things that are coming clearer and clearer and clearer with, with every passing day. So there's that. One of the things that Heather was absolutely certain to ask Parker still when he was on the stand was in regards to his JAG service because Parker still was attached to the JAG unit. Why bother asking an FBI agent whether or not he had been involved in military tribunal trials. That to me was a bit telling. I didn't quite get it at first until you and I had that conversation and I started seeing what this is really about. This was about, and I started thinking of the, the movie, The Sting, or any kind of sting operation. You were a cop, you know what it's like to set up a sting. You got your undercover folks, you got folks that are doing this, that, and the other to make things look a certain way, to be able to draw out the bad guys, to see, to make visible all of the corruption. I put it together with the fact that when I, the very first day of that trial, I saw that there was no fringe on the American flag. Now, I don't really understand what all that means. I know what folks say it means. I don't really know what the truth of that is, but that's still a piece of the puzzle that plays into it because every courtroom I've ever been in shows the, the fringe on the flag, but it wasn't there. Yeah, that's a really interesting observation. And I'm in the same boat with you. I've, I've heard the, the stories of what it means. Um, and I've seen it in every courtroom. I've seen that gold fringe and it's, I've never seen a courtroom without it. And it just blows my mind that this particular courtroom didn't have that. And, and now granted, most of the courtrooms I've been in have been, you know, uh, local, county, state, whatever, right? I, I've never actually been in a federal courtroom. So I have nothing to base my observations on as far as a different time in a federal courtroom. But there, of course, it does, it had a seal behind the judge that, that showed the Eastern District of Tennessee. And yet there was no Tennessee flag. Only the United States flag with no trim. So I can't state whether or not uh, a state flag 
was supposed to be in there or not because I don't know. But I do know that the the state seal appeared behind the judge on the wall. It was a huge plaque. You know, it looked like it was practically engraved in the wall kind of thing. So I found that interesting and a bit of a puzzle piece. The piece about asking Parker Still in regards to his service in, in his time in the reserves with the JAG unit that he was in, had he ever participated in a military tribunal? And if so, in what capacity? Well, what difference does any of that make in this kind of a situation? Unless if this were to bring out corruption, perhaps somewhere along the line, this will end up being a military tribunal. Because I have to tell you that on this on the stand, as part of Heather's testimony, in her defense, she called Parker Still out as an as a foreign agent for the Federal Reserve. So kind of makes you wonder why. I, I just don't know. And and some of the questions that she asked that Federal Reserve representative was the Federal Reserve involved in commandeering the value of the original depositors. I, I, I can't say exactly how she said it, but she, the word commandeering was in there. I know that. And when those transcripts come out, there are several questions that she asked that he said no to that I have a feeling will eventually come out as perjury. Wow. Wow. So wow, wow, wow. This, this entire thing in my view, again, doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just some old broad from North Carolina that got to witness what I feel is history. But I'm telling you, I got a feeling that when it actually all comes down to it, this has all been about hashtag all becomes transparent now. That's why I created that hashtag. And that is the feeling that I have. And everybody can walk around and say, oh, well, if, it, if, if they weren't guilty, they wouldn't have gone to jail. Well, first of all, who says they're really in jail? I'm sorry. Shit does not always go the way we think it is. And it's my understanding that Randy is still in uh, protective custody with the U.S. Marshals. Why? If he's been found guilty, why does he still have a U.S. Marshal assigned to protect him? Well, have, they haven't had the sentencing phase yet, have they? No, they haven't. And, and, and by the way, it's set for June. Why so far away? There's a lot. Of course, again, I don't know anything about the way these kinds of things operate. I don't know. Is, is it common practice to set a sentencing hearing five months away? I don't know. Yeah, see, I, I don't have a clue either, but I can't see. Well, except for the fact that, you know, yeah, it's a business jails are a business. So maybe they, you know, house both of them in jail for five extra months before you actually sentence them. That's a lot of no ray me. They're going to be raking in. I just don't know. It just, there's too many things that point to this all being, um, for the benefit of making it all transparent and visible and no. Not everybody can see that right now. They weren't there. They're, maybe they aren't puzzle piece collectors. Maybe, maybe the mind control of, well, they were found guilty. If they were innocent, they would have went free. That kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. But there's way more to this than just meets the cursory glance of, of you know, mm. looking from the outside. And I just... 
again, I don't, I don't really have, I, no, I don't have any inside information. I just met most of these folks for the first time when I went there. So all I have is what little bit of intuition of my own that I trust. I'm beginning to trust more and more all the time. But something in my gut tells me this ain't over, number one. And number two, this is the way Heather described that the Federal Reserve is insulated. There's three rings of protection. The first was the political. And we, we can see anyone who's following the QAnon posts and what's been going on with the draining of the swamp and what's been going on with, you know, the, I don't know, now it's supposed to be this outrageous number of sealed indictments and all of that that's going on. It would appear that the political portion of that protection is about to crumble and fall to the ground. The next ring in is law enforcement. Well, anybody who's heard about the FISA memo and what's been going on with the FBI and seeing how it was the FBI that was involved in this and Heather calling him out right on from the stand, it would seem to me that that ring of protection is about to drop. And why don't you give people a nutshell who need a nutshell about the FISA memo? Well, all I understand about that is that the, the FISA is, is there's some sort of a court that, that the FBI went and presented evidence that they needed to surveil American citizens to prove that there was some sort of collusion between uh, Trump and Russia. And this was back during the election, before he was ever elected. And there's an awful lot that's coming out about that. Now, now I'm given to understand there's a 99, the first memo was a four page memo, and now there's a 99 page document that is, by the way, apparently heavily redacted, um, that was filled with a whole bunch of stuff that isn't even true from the FBI. And there's these, all these texts and things. There's, it just seems to me like that's crumbling fast. And the rats are jumping off the ship in, in droves, apparently, from the FBI. Um, what is it? One guy stepped down just recently. Another one was fired. I just don't even know. I, I, got, I tell you, that's happening so fast, I haven't really kept up. So that appears to be crumbling at a very fast clip. The final ring of insulation around the Federal Reserve was the judicial. And what did we just do? Spend two weeks up in the judicial arm of this, bringing out all the, all the corruption and fraud for that. All, I mean, I, I have document 98. I went ahead and printed it out here that Heather submitted to the court. And, and oh my God, there's some really explosive stuff in this. Yeah. I mean, you've read it, right? Yeah, I, that's the that's the final uh, price of pay one that was uh, yes. denied or stricken from the record, right? Right, but I, 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 you know, I just she, I will tell you that as much of this information that's contained in this document as possible was in her testimony because they represented themselves. When it was their turn, they called themselves to the stand. Both of them did. And without an attorney to do the questioning, what they were instructed to do by the judge was give a factual narrative. And believe me, a lot, if not all, of what was in here 
made it into the record when Heather was on the stand. So everything, including the threat that, that she was in the middle of handling that was made against POTUS, President of the United States, Donald Trump, for those who don't know what POTUS is, that she was made aware of a plot to assassinate him and that it had escalated to immediate slash imminent as she was in Texas. And she said this, by the way, dealing with the Texas camp. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I, I don't want anyone to quote me here, but I could swear she just either said Texas camp. And for those who don't know, that means the bushes. I'm not quite sure. I can't wait for, for the, for the, maybe that was in her testimony or her narrative in court. Cause it, I don't, well, I don't remember was, the words Texas camp when I was reading through the document. It was, it was in court and I'm, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that that will be, I mean, I can't wait for the transcripts to come out. I'm hoping I don't, I haven't misremembered that because you know, I could have, but all of this, all of this in this final document number 98 that talks about the universal cleanup, it's my feeling at this point that this was done on purpose, like I said, to get it into the official record, the official digital record of the judicial system. It cannot be denied. Even though it was stricken, even though this information was stricken, I don't know. Like I said, she stated it on record. So even though it's stricken, doesn't it still go in as a PACER doc? It is listed as a PACER doc. And PACER doc is, is the documenting system for the courts. That just means that that they're not going to use it as part of that hearing and right. making their they decision. They can't, they can't see, give it to the jurors, but as, because this does have a page ID and it's part of the case number and it's a document. So he might have stricken it from being able to be seen by the jurors mm -hmm. But the fact that she entered these precipices time and time and time again, and they kept striking them, that's still all on the record. So the, the question that I have that, that I don't know the answer to, um, it seems to me, in my sense of what Heather's perception is with these precipices, um, their orders, their declarations to the court to uh, to correct uh, what something foundational before you know before this case can even be heard. It because this this is such a core nature that it affects uh, a lot more than just her case. Right. And and there. Oh, hello, BZ. Hi. How you doing? We're doing lovely. Good. Well, we just to let you know, you came in on a conversation about the case. So just are you recording? You know, yes, you are? I am. Yes, we are. We both are. And we can stop and start with you. I know your time is very precious, but I wanted you to be aware that we have been recording. I asked Dandy to come talk me down off the ledge, so. <laughs> okay. So do we, do we stop recording now? Do you like being on the ledge? <laughs> I'm already off the ledge. I okay. just, I, I, and I'm happy to explain to you what, what took place, but. No I, name. I did it to myself. I do it all the time. And I'm done. It's with always it. an inside job. <laughs> well, yes. let me let me just finish up with my last thoughts with that, Thank and then we'll you. stop recording, and then and then we'll start up again for a talk with BZ. And exactly. that's and that was just that. Uh, it seems to me that there is some sort of a prescribed way to deal with 
someone issuing a price to pay rather than to just label it as, you know, nonsensical or defying common sense or whatever C. Clifford labeled it as. There, there's got to be a procedural way. And then the, the offshoot question for that is, what, what is, what is the way that you appeal or, or seek, uh, seek a correction in the court's behavior when, when they don't honor a principe, what they're supposed to be doing? You know, they're, they're, they're saying, la, 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 I don't <laughs> see it. And, and what, what honestly, what, what do you do? That's well, that's, question. I think for me, that that's exactly the entire point. That's why I said from the very beginning of our conversation, there's a hell of a lot more going on in all of this than any of us at the moment. I'm sure there are those who, who are in the know, who know what's happening, grasp it. And I can feel that there's way, way, way more. And I also feel that the whole point was to hashtag all becomes transparent now. That was the entire point of it all because it is all now in the actual digital record. Whether Joe Blow on Facebook wants to believe it or not and look at just the cursory thing where they say, oh, well, they found them guilty. They're guilty and that's it. And let's move on to the next. Whatevs is all I got to say at this point, because there's way more and it's, and it will be shown out. That's my thoughts and feelings on it. And that's all I got. And so we'll stop here. And if you guys busy, I know you'd like to see the clock at the top. Do you want us to stop and just come back in so you can see the clock at the top? Because I'm happy to do that. No, I'll just write it down. I mean, okay. you can stop and, don't you want to want to stop anyway? So you have to cut this one off and yes, I would like to do that. So let's all jump out and jump right back in. Is that cool? Oh, uh, you mean totally leave the meeting? Yep. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Danny, yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 a thing. It's a thing, Danny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just jump out and jump back in. Okay. All right. Sounds all like right. we're skinny dipping or something. Yes, that's right? what we're doing. It's